everything said uh, sorry about that but I want to welcome everyone to the house of the lost sheep of Israel I'm Elder Michael Johnson and today we have a pretty good interesting interesting teaching which will be going forth today and just to let people know ahead of time let people know ahead of time it will be a second part of this which is <clears throat> what the body what what the body was created for part two and that'll be today at three o'clock i'll be announcing that again later but that has a second part which tells you about a lot of things that we really need to know but today we looking at and we want to understand something that's really important and most people um who follows me they they some know and some don't know. But 
I try to take you in what we doing. We go on this journey. And with this, this journey, for many of us, we're going to see this journey getting ready to take a turn. Not the turn just for today. But this turn going to be forever. In one second. And we want to make sure what this journey is. What this journey is, is making sure we're going to be going through here and there on all things on what this whole journey is all about with the most high God. I just want to check something with one of my elders real second. One second. One second. <clears throat> I can let you know in one second. Just give me one hot second. And he, as soon as I get this confirmation, I can continue to move forward on what I'm doing. But I want to just check something real quick. Okay, we're good. <clears throat> but what I want you to really understand on this journey is a couple of things. In what we need to know, what it is. In one of them, one of them, we want to understand here. And, and I'm going to take this one part out here. Uh, one second. I want to take that out because last time it was doing something different. But I want to know, and have you ever pondered, have you ever thought about, have you ever even considered what were we created for? Have you ever taken the time to, to just think, why was I created? What makes me come here? Why am I here? Have you ever thought about that? What's the point on... What was the purpose for you to come here and to be injected into this world? What, what was the, what was the point of that? And, and, and the easiest way to do this, the easiest way to do this, have you ever taken the time ever taken the time to where you plant a seed in the ground? You take one seed in the ground and you watch that one seed grow. <clears throat> I don't care what that seed is, but you just watch that one seed grow. And then when the seed grows, you, you, you water it, you, you changing it, you changing the dirt, you changing the compost, you changing all these things. And after you do all these things, then once it, materialize up to the part to where you want to have fruits or vegetables on it. Then the first thing you do, you harvest from what you originally planted <clears throat> from a seed. You planted that from a seed and now you reaping the harvest from the seed you planted in the ground. It's something that we can learn from that because what we was doing <clears throat> We was anticipating their growth. And if we anticipated that, it's the same as what God did. God planted a seed and he anticipated the growth from the seed that he planted in the ground. We from the dust of the earth. So this journey is a process. It's working inside. The seed is, it, it, when you look inside of a seed, you can't see what's going on on the outside. You got to look at what's going on on the inside of the seed, not on the outside. You can look into the seed and you can see a whole nother world contained with inside the seed. It's a comparable situation. We find ourselves into, the, into this today's world. So the doctrine of the seed, including the reason why it was sown, and it was for the purpose on what it was created for. So we have to look at this and we want to understand the aspect. The same thing is what we want to cl clearly get and really understand where I'm coming from when I talk this way is what we want to do. When you get a seed, you take a melon seed. When you plant a melon seed, you're not looking to get tomatoes. You follow me? When you plant a, a, a melon seed, you're not looking to get tomatoes. 
The same as when you sit there and you put soybean seeds in the ground, you're not looking to get corn. If you plant beans in a harvest and you get something else, it means it was changed based on the what is existence on what the cycle of life on what it was supposed to be. And people had changed the purpose of what it was came for and what it was living for. Are you guys with me? I want you to follow me on this because we got to find out what this body was created for. We're going to look at some scripture and then we're going to get some understanding. I want to make sure that everybody is here. Make sure you have some pencils and paper because this is, we're going to share some stuff with you. We're going to share some stuff with you. I normally don't share. And I only do this personally because it was something that I was brought up when I was bringing coming up under Dr. Shaul is certain things here keep back. So when we meet people personally in these supposed to be these high level scholars or whatever they want to call themselves, but then we find out how really, how much they really know what they know based on Hebrew. They say they know Hebrew and they know Greek, they know everything. And when they do that, it finds out when we, when we sit there and we have scripture personally, and the reason I have to say personally, then it allows me to make sure I can see what you're doing and you can't go run to some commentary. You can't go run to some book. So that's why most people don't know why I say that, but that's why we, we like to be personal when we do those things, because when you personal, they can't sit there and, and, and try to go run to some commentary. It's the same thing as when some couple of years back, we had that Michael Holloway guy on here and he sit there and I can ask him a question. It'd take him sometime a couple of minutes because what he's doing, he's searching commentary to see how to answer back, even though his commentary wouldn't even answering, but he was doing that to answer back. And if we was in personal, if we was face to face, he wouldn't be able to do that. Now he has to stand on what he actually knows. That's why I say now today, we're going to learn a lot of things today and it's going to help us as we continue on this journey to where we need to go. So first I want you to look at something. I want to take you over to first Corinthians. We're going to look at chapter six, but we want to look at verse 13. I'm highlighting that to where we can see what's, what it's saying here. It says meats is for the belly meats is for the belly, including belly for meats. We're going to figure this one out. We're going to, we're going to break it down. We're going to figure it out. It's because it's going to say it's more. It says, but God shall destroy both. He's going to destroy both it, including them. Now the body is not for fornication, but the creator, the body is not for fornication, but for the creator, the body is not for fornication, but for the creator. Keep repeating it because I want you to pound this into us. Including the creator for the body. Including the creator for the body. That's why we are the temples of God, but we're going to get into some of that. And we want to understand what do that mean? Because our bodies are not created. And many people think so, but many people will push this doctrine as what they think they have the right to do. And what you see, the same thing you see with Deacon Micah, he went out and he was doing about divesting and all these things, what was going on. And we sit there and we deal with those things, but you got to remember, we sit there and we mix and match with these bodies. And we are the temple or the tabernacle of God. So our belly is the storehouse. I want you to write that down and make sure we label that out. So put belly, put storehouse, belly equals storehouse And the meats is talking about the doctrines and the teachings. So we know that. And then we know what the bodies. And then when it comes to the harvest, we have to produce fruit that God was looking for at the end and both going to be destroyed. But we have to remember it's going to be used by fire. It's going to be used by fire on the ones he can't use it's going into the fire, but the other one's going to be brought into the house and we know the belly is the doctrines and the teachings. So I do have a question that we want to make sure that we clearly get and understand on how everything is. Let's take a closer look at this and let's go down to, let's go back up. We're going to look at verse nine. I want to go back up. We're going to look at verse nine and get a better understanding of what's happening here. 
and it and it tells us right up front. It says, "Know ye not that unrighteousness, that unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of God." So if something not growing in the way that it was supposed to grow when it was planted, I don't care how we look at it, how we flip it, how we script it out, whatever you think, you can sit there and thank it for yourself. You can put your own doctrine on it. You can do whatever you want to do, but it's telling you unrighteousness should not inherit the kingdom of God. And we know every seed has everything it contains within itself. And if you decide you want to mix it, divest it, whatever you feel you want to do, because it's your prerogative. Then at the end, you shouldn't worry about this part here about inheriting the kingdom of God. It says, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor, uh, nor idolaters, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infirmants, nor, Abuser of themselves with mankind. This is clear. It's clear, but we want to understand what it's actually talking about, because when you look at this and we see some of the things that it's talking about, knowing righteousness is going to inherit the kingdom of God. So be not deceived, neither fornicators. We got, we got to deal with that also. But I also want to make sure we look at idolaters and Adulterers and infirmant. And an infirmant is a homosexual. Just for people who don't know, that's what that's talking about. It's talking about a homosexual, a sodomite. And they even bring in more to this because we have people who don't like to touch on these things. They like to touch on it and get away from it because we have a lot of homosexuality that's going out throughout this world, especially in America. And we have, and every time they want to show a homosexual, they want to show us. But the main thing you want to understand is this. They are abuser of themselves with mankind. See, and, then, and same thing, no ungodly seed producing these certain things because homosexuals can't, can't reproduce nothing. But then they want to go out and get, and then they want to go out and, 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 and you know, uh, adopt one. But my question is this, and, and you see this and where you find out, where you find out teachers from fakers, teachers from fakers, tape fakers, teachers. We just use it that way. The reason why I want to say that I want you to clearly understand something. The same thing when we go in Zoom area. And if I notice and I see you and we see you and I see that you are a homosexual or you talking homosexual language, I will address you. I have no problem with that because I want you to clearly get this and, and understand where I come from, even on this same, same subject as we going down. What I want you to know is this. And, and this is what homosexuals. And the main thing is you have homosexuals in same if we have homosexuals even here and the homosexuals come in here on a weekly basis, let's say just on a weekly basis. And you're not looking for the word of God to change you. And you just looking to come here. You think that God made you that way and you're fine with that. And you just come in here to get a word because truth is over here being taught. Then I don't know why you're here. Cause God didn't make you that way. That's making God a liar. And God's not a liar. So my thing is the channel goes up and down. If you're not trying to change your life and you already know homosexuals, as he tells you, which we're going to be looking at a whole lot of this in different things, then it's no reason for you to be here. None, because you're not looking to change. Even if you're a fornicator, if you're a fornicator, why are you here? And you're not looking to change. If you're adulterer and you're not looking to change, why are you here? You sitting there, people will sit there and they talk about this and talk about that. But if you sitting there and you want to sit there where I can have me an extra something side piece or something like that. Okay. The, my, my question to you is why are you here? What is the purpose of being here? Because we're not sitting here to play game. We're not here to play church. We're not here to play anything other than what the word of God is. So where we can prepare people to where the most high, where you can be one of the ones he's looking for in these last days. And you sitting there thinking, well, I need to take care of my needs. Okay. And you're married and you want your needs taken care of elsewhere. Why are you here? 
why was a homosexual here and you're not looking to change your lifestyle? Let's look at something. I'm going to show you something. In, 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 in uh, Leviticus chapter 18, verse 21. And we're going, to, we're going to deal with a couple of things in here. And we're going to look at this. And, and he's telling you something. It says, including thou shall not let any of thy seed pass through the fire of Moloch. Did we get that? Did we get it? And I'm going to make sure we get it because I'm, I'm, I'm going to break all this down for us to, to where we can understand it. And it says any of the seed pass through Moloch. And the main thing is what you dealing with Moloch is talking about. Moloch is governed by lust. Don't let any of the seed pass through the fire, pass through your desire governed by lust. That's what that just said. That's what that just said. You don't let that pass through governed by your lust. You're going to do something. In fact, let's, let's, we're going to jump over here. We're going to go back and finish out 10 and then we're going to go back. It says, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor, nor, no rivalers, nor extorters shall inherit the kingdom of God. And they shouldn't period. Period. And we shouldn't let anything, don't let the word of God govern by lust change what you're doing. Because some people are going to sit there and say, no, nah, well, I need to take care of that. I need to take care of that. Really? Are you serious? And you look at Luke chapter, chapter eight and picking it up at verse 11, where he makes this perfectly clear. This is the seed because it says now the parable is this, which always been here. And we see the seed is the word of God. And you don't let any of the seed pass through the fire, pass through the desire of Moloch governed by your lust, period. Neither shall thou profane the way of thy God, thy name of thy God. I am the spirit of God. Don't you do this. Body ain't created for this. Create body is not created to have these 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 these, these fornications and, and just oh well I need to take care of this. I need to take care of that. And he tells you, thou shalt not lie with man M A N, so that's man or woman, as with womankind, it is an abomination. It's an abomination governed by your lust. And you look at this in Romans. I want to take you somewhere in Romans chapter, chapter one, verse 26. And, and just check this. I want you to just see this. It says for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. Even their women did change the natural use into that, which is against nature. It's against nature. And we'll sit there and watch it on TV and cool with it and all this silly stuff. The body's not even created for that. Men sitting there and they worried about going into each other. And then sit there and talking about God, God, God made them that way. God made them that way. That's the same way God made watermelons without seeds. You believe that? No, no. They made watermelons without seeds. They, they changed the order of what, how it was supposed to be. Everything had a seed within itself. They took the seeds out. The same as men is they saying, no, well, I'm created this way. No, you wasn't. No, you can tell that lie all day long. No, you governed in your lust. And people say, well, I think he's, well, yeah, please send me an email. See, you do, the one that you want to do, they mainly people, they, I know they send Deacon Mike and them, but tons of emails based on that stuff. Send me one. 
See, because my thing is, I'd rather see you go live and we can go live and we can discuss it because there's no way possible you can find not one piece of a scripture that will support that, 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 that ideology. That's ignorance. That's craziness. And as he says, he's, and he, he goes on more. He goes on more and they, they change, which is against nature. And then men sitting there looking at the women and, and the same thing it says, and likewise, also men, men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust, governed, sending the seed through Moloch. One towards another. One towards just the thought on how men do that. Just the thought is crazy. Burned in their lust, one towards another. And it tells you more. It says men with men working that which is unseemly, including receding in themselves that recompense, because you don't get paid for that, of their error, which was meat. Which was meat. You see over there where we started off at. Meat is for the belly. <laughs> and that meat will not be stored. That meat going to the fire. That meat is going to the fire. How can a watermelon have no seed and have intercourse with another watermelon with no seed? You're going to produce nothing. Or you're going to have the melon going to deal with all these different things. Or you say, well, I'll tell you what, well, I still want to deal with another type of person. I don't want this type of watermelon. I want this other watermelon. I want my watermelon, even though my watermelon green, I want to go get this yellow watermelon. Really? That's interesting. The reason that's interesting because the most high, he made sure all this was clear from the beginning. Actually, <clears throat> let me um make that a little bit smaller. And let me see if I might change this one. Let me see. I might have to change this one. And I put uh put the cambers there. Let me see. No, the cambers doing the same thing. So let me um. Let me do this one here. And I don't know why I do that on certain ones. And they like to do it on Genesis quite a bit. They like to do it on Genesis quite a bit. So let me go to three. And I'm going to go up to that. And let me see if it'll let me hit. Nope, still not letting me hit 11. I'm going to shrink it a little bit more. <clears throat> Probably I can get it all there. Yeah, now we want to float, which is crazy. But it says right here, we're going to look at this. As it says, it says, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, including fruit tree, yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. It's fruit trees and its seed was in itself. I want you to clearly get what he's saying here. And watch, he says a little bit more. Verse 12, including the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind and God saw that it was good. Now, the problem is you got Creoles, you got, you got everybody mixed up now. Everybody is mixed up now. That's interesting. And they was created a certain way. But we decide we want to mix and match. Or we want to sit there and, and believe that we can don't have to provide seed within it. And then some of us just going to use seed for elsewhere. We're going to use seed a whole nother way. We're going to do these things a whole nother way way on when we when we do whatever we want to do 
this is our problem because we have done these things and we don't think nothing about them. We don't think nothing about these things. We don't think nothing about life, but we think we govern in lust. We govern in lust and we feel we can do what we want to do. I want to show you something. And in the same thing with, with owning, owning, he was to do something. Owning was to do something. Owning was to do something. But we want to look at what owning was to do and what owning did. It says owning knew that the seed should not be his because his brother had died and Juna and, 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 and Judah told him, Hey, I need you to go into your brother's wife and, and you marry her and raise up seed unto your brother. Actually, I'm going to show it to you because you're going to see it. It's actually right here. It says in Ur, Judah firstborn was wicked in the sight of the spirit of God and the spirit of God slew him. And Judah said to own it, go into thy brother's wife and marry her and raise up seed unto thy brother. And that's what he was supposed to do. Nothing more, nothing less. But I'm going to show you how he did it a homosexual way. He did it in a homosexual type of way, but these homosexual even, but they do it inside of them. But, but this is the same thing. Like they given seed, but two men can't have seed in one another. Same as women. But this is what's going on here. You see this right now is now going to say now when he went into his brother's wife that he spilt it on the ground, least that he should give seed to his brother. He didn't want to do it. So he'll go in there and have and, ha and do the sexual act. But before the act is finished, he'll spill the seed on the ground. He'll spill the seed on the ground. So the same thing with a homosexual, infirmary, a sodomite. See, they sitting there, they going in each other. And I don't care how we look at it, how we flip it. They're going in each other. Same thing with women. You, you, well, however y'all do it, but y'all doing it. The same thing. And that seed is being spilled on the ground. He's clear here. He says, including the thing that which he did displeased the spirit of God. It displeased him. Even though Onan was going into a woman. He was going into what he was supposed to, which it was created for, but he still chose to take the seed and I'm going to spill this seed on the ground. I ain't gonna, nah, I'm going to spill it on the ground. Wherefore, wherefore, he who, the spirit of God, so we could say, wherefore, the spirit of God slew him also. He killed him too. I want you to think about that. <laughs> That's something you for, for you to think about. See, many men and many women and young kids, and as they're coming up, they're sitting there, they're thinking, oh, I can do this, I can do that, I can do this, I can do that. I'm going to go get this protection, I'm going to go get this protection, and we can have protected sex. And I can have partners. You can have partners. Something the body you're not even created for. Bunch of partners. And as I said, it's, it tells right back here. And thou shall not lie with mankind as with womankind it is abomination. It's abomination. And he's telling us when we sit there and that's why he wants you, when you going into someone, he wants you to be married for that reason. For that reason. And we want to look at something. I want to show you something that's what he's talking about to help us out. And we're going to go to Psalms 119, picking it up. And we're going to look at Psalms 119, but we want to go to verse 106. And it's written. 
I have sworn I will perform it. I will keep thy righteous judgments. I will keep my righteous judgments. He has sworn. <clears throat> he sworn. I will perform it. And, and, and if he's going to swore, if he's sworn and he's going to perform it and you sit in there and he's keeping his oath and you're going to sit there and you're going to, and he told you to, to be fruitful and multiply and you sitting there saying, no, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, most high, hold up one second. I like this guy. So we're going to adopt. Cause I like this guy or hold up, hold up. I like her. Me and her, two women, we we love each other. I'm rolling with her. We're going to adopt or we let him. We can even let a man go into him. But that's all we want. Just him to just plant seed and he can move on. And the Bible tells us, don't let no seed pass through Moloch. Don't let none of your desire be governed by lust. Be governed by your profane ways. This is what's going to go on. This is what's happening here today. In fact, um, I want to take you somewhere. Take you somewhere. Before we, we, we just picking up right now, we just going down aisles, picking up what we need to get. We just getting the stuff we need to get right now, but we're going to get deep into it. But we get, but we need to pick up a couple of things in these different aisles in, in, in Hebrews chapter 12. And, and it says this in verse 16, it's something real peculiar that we need to see. It says, at least there be any fornicator. Didn't he say no fornicator is going to enter into the kingdom? Not one, not one. You can sit there. Well, I think I'm going to, you not going in there. And this, the, this, the, I'm talking about a lot of us is so ignorant to the point to where we think, well, I can get in on mine. I had a reason for doing mine. At least there be any, you don't say any except you, you don't see your, if you see that, then you, you let me know. Cause all it says is any, when it says any, that includes everybody fornicator or profane person. And now you're going to compare you to Esau as Esau for one morsel of meat. Soul is birthright for one morsel, for one doctrine and teaching for one morsel, for one fragment is all the same. That morsel is one fragment, a piece of a doctrine. But what was this about? See, this is the thing what we do here. We we want to just show you what actually happened. And I want you to see what's going on here. And I'm going to actually let, let's, let me show you something here. Because what did, what did he do? See, because most people sit there and they put everything there on what Esau did. But then nobody know where Esau got his information from. Nobody know where he got his information from. And that's what we're going to find out. Where did he get his information from about this profane things? We we'll want to show you something. And we're going to shock a lot of people, but we're going to, I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to show it to you the way you can see it. In, in Genesis chapter 25, and we're going to pick it up at verse 28. That's where it came from. And it tells us right here, it says, And Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. The problem is we just don't know what this actually is saying, but when we actually break it down in the paleo, we know what it's talking about because we're going to find out because it's telling you right here, it's saying, And Isaac loved Jacob because he learned of his venison, of his wild flesh. That's all venison is. Wild flesh. He learned of it from him. Not saying that Isaac was doing it, but Isaac was telling him about something else. And the reason we see this here, because Isaac, as with, with Abraham, Isaac now, they dwelt in, in Lohara. That's where he dealt. They, 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 they dwell right next to there. In Lohara is the waters of the wilderness, the knowledge of the wild. The knowledge of the wilderness is what actually we're gonna tell you what we're gonna let me let me get into some of this. 
<laughs> we gonna get into some of that because I'm gonna show you what he what he did. I want to show you what he did. But he went through Kaddish, which is sanctified and set apart. But then he was staying over there by 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 breed, which is the place of hell, the seed. That's where the seed come from, and we got to see this. Let, let me let me go down a little bit. Let's go back up to verse eleven. I want to show you some what what just what's going on. I want to show you what's happening here, the way we can get it. In verse eleven in, in Genesis chapter twenty five, it telling you it says it came to pass after the death of Abraham. So we know Abraham, the father of Isaac, he died, and and it says and God blessed his son Isaac. So he blessed him. He gave him wisdom. He gave him understanding of this of Isaac, and Isaac dwelt by the well of Lohara. This is where I told you. This is where he dwelt at. He was hanging. This is where he's hanging out at over there. Now this is a problem. I'm going to show you why this is a problem because it's telling you what it is. It's the waters of the wilderness. It's the knowledge of the wilderness. This is what he, so Isaac sees this stuff. We don't know. And we don't know if the, if the scripture is telling you what Isaac did, you don't see it. So you don't sit there and start injecting information in the Bible and it's not giving it to you, but it's telling you he dwelt there. So did he have information? Yeah. Why? Because he was telling his son about it. And Esau ate it up. <laughs> and Esau liked it. And actually, I'll show you something. I want to I just show you something just to, just to where we can be on the same page. Let's go to uh, Genesis 26. I just want to show you something. Show you a little bit. 26 and verse 34. 26 and verse 34. And this is really a trip. This is a trip, but, but, but this, but he's getting it from his daddy and it's telling, he says, and Esau was 40 years old when he took a wife, uh, Judith, the daughter of Beri and a Hittite and, 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 and Barshima, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. What are you getting mad for? Watch this. Well, watch this. Where did he get the information from? Which were grieved in the mind unto Isaac and Rebecca. Why? His daddy was turning him on to this stuff. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It's, it's almost comical because as his daddy telling him about it, see, we don't know, and the scriptures don't know, so if people say, well, he told him this and told him this, no, no, you don't know what Isaac told him. That's why I'm not telling you, saying, well, Isaac did this and that. No, but Isaac gave him the information because he ate of his venison. So he knew what was going on. But the problem is what Isaac told him came back to bite him. Not once, but came back to bite him twice. Actually, I'm going to tell you, I'll show it to you. He bit him twice. I'm going to show you this one. This, this big, because you see here, he married two there. You're going to see he get married. He married some more. We're going to find this in Genesis chapter 28 and pick it up at verse 8. I want to just show you this one real quick. I wasn't going to go here, but we'll go here. I want to show you. It says Esau seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac, his father. He knew it didn't. He knew it didn't. But watch this. He, he, ain't, he ain't, he's not playing around. Then when Isaac, uh, Esau went into Ishmael, who is Ishmael? That's his dang uncle. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's comical sometimes because you see what he did. Who was staying there? Ishmael lived over there. So it ain't like he went a thousand something miles. No, he was right over there in the next city. And took wives, which uh, 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 Mathali, the daughter of Ishmael's Abraham's son. It's telling you the sister of Nabajah to be his wife. And he knew it was going to make his dad mad. He knew this. And as I said, it says, at least there be any fornicators or profane person as he saw for one morsel, for one morsel. So what did he do? So we want to know what did he do for this one morsel of meat? I want you to look at this and, and, and what he did. He, he, he sold. And I want you to write this down again. We're going to make some information where we're going to make stuff clear the way you can't get away from it. Because anytime we come here, I'm going to make sure you under you and me and you sitting on the same level to where we can't get out of this. So understand what soul mean. I want you to write it down. 
and sold mean made merchandise. He made merchandise of this. So it says for one morsel of doctrine made merchandise his birthright. That's what, that's what Esau did. He made merchandise of his birthright. That's what he did. And, 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 and it, it tells you more when we look at verse 17. For ye know how that afterwards when he would have inherited the blessing, because he still would, he still would have got it still, no matter what, even though the blessing went to, 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 to Jacob, but long as Esau still held on to what the word of God was, he still would have inherited the blessing, but he didn't, he, he, he made merchandise of it. And he said, would have, would inherit the blessing. He was rejected for he found no place for remembrance. Yeah. Cause he knew what he was doing. Though he saw it carefully with tears, crocodile tears don't work. Crocodile tears do not work here. And the main thing, all he had to do was something that was real straightforward in Deuteronomy chapter. Um, we're going to look at this chapter 10 and verse 12. It's telling us right up front. He made merchandise of this. This is what he made merchandise. He made merchandise of this here. And now Israel, what do the spirit of thy God, your God require of thee, but to desire the spirit of thy God, to walk in his, all his ways, to love him and to serve the spirit of thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul. That's what you're supposed to do. And with that, you also put here over here, we're going to look at Leviticus. I want to show you something. I want to show you what's required of us. What is required of us in Leviticus chapter 19, picking up at verse 18, lets us know, lets us know thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the spirit of God. And don't you make merchandise of this in this right here, clearly telling us once you wrap all this up in a nice little bowl, in a nice little bowl in Deuteronomy chapter six. And we'll look at this and verse 24, it tells us, it tells us in the spirit of God commanded us to do all these statutes to desire the spirit of that God of our God for our good always that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. And it should be our righteousness. That's our righteousness. That's how he know we doing what we need to do. That's how he know we taking care of what we need to be doing. That's how he know these things. And as long as we doing that and then, and, and it shall be our righteousness. If we observe to do all these commandments before the spirit of our God, as he have commanded us, that's clear. That's clear as day. And we know this is a covenant because we see this here. And just like I said, we're not getting out of anything today. We're not getting out to tell you right there in verse five. It says, now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you should be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine. Exodus chapter 19, verse, verse five. Yeah. Yeah. You tell me, see, this is where we want to, we want to play games. Like all of a sudden we super educated over making better decisions than God. Understand this. And I want to show you if, 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 if another branch, if another branch you connect it, let's say you connect it to an apple tree, you connect it to an apple tree. Let's say you are one of the branches of an apple tree. I want you to put this in your mind, close your eyes and put this in your mind. And you one of the branches of an apple tree, but then your branch is making oranges or your fruit is bad from the tree. That branch will ruin others. You are both from them from the same tree. Remember here why you um, we're going to go back over here. I just want to make sure we, we keep this in mind. Keep one thing in mind in first Corinthians and chapter six. I want you to keep that in mind. And I want you to 
make sure that we, we, we have this embedded in as we move forward. We got to keep that in the front of the thing. And it says the meat is for the belly and the belly is for the meats. We got that. So remember the body is not <clears throat> for fornication. The body is not for fornication. The body is not for adultery. The body is not for idolatry. The body is not for covetousness. The body is not made for those things, which those things we put in the body. The same as you look at Leviticus and just making sure Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22, it tells you thou shall not lie with mankind as with womankind. This is abomination. These are abominations to the body. Abominations to the body. You can't change that. In fact, um, you see this here. We'll say, I'm going to show you one thing. And, um, we'll go to two and we'll go up. And this way we can probably get it better. And we'll look at 26. And we just looked at this. It says, God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, let him and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over the cattle, over the, all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image and the image God created he, him, male, including female, created he, them. Interesting. The reason this is so interesting because no matter what, we let people talk us out of what the Bible says. Why do we do this? And we sit there, all they have to do is make a little ounce of our little pea brain sense. And we sit there and we'll go with whatever this man says. And it says, for the Lord formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life. And he became a living soul. Not, 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 not even actually, I'm going to tell you what, let me, let me pinhole this to make sure we just get nailed to the cross. We, that's what we need to do. Cause we need to be nailed to the cross on this. <clears throat> in 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 uh second degrees chapter 16 but i want to take you to verse 61 i want to make sure we can't get out of this it's telling you right here and it's telling showing you what, what this is it says he who the spirit of god made man and put in his heart i'm only pausing for an effect I'm only pausing for an effect. That's all I'm pausing for. I'm pausing for a straight out effect. That's it. The reason why, because the spirit of God put his heart in the midst of the body. He put his seed in the midst of the body. I want you to, I keep pausing because I want you to think about it. I want you to think about what he, what he just said. I want you to think about what's just going on. I want you to think about what's happening here. And long as we get that and understand what is going on, we can clearly understand then why he's talking the way he talks. See, everybody think he's this mushy, gushy God. And he's not. He, he says, you give them warning from me. When I, ret when I return, they better be doing something that they better be doing. And you see this here where he, he tells them, he says, he, he made man and put his heart in the midst of the body. Because what he told us from the beginning. The body was made for the creator. He gave him breath and life and understanding. It's right here, right, right, right in front of us. So he put his desires in the earth and, he, and that's why the seed. So you can't let that seed go through Moloch. But our bodies were created for the creator and not for fornication. It wasn't created for fornication. So men and women should not be doing these crazy things. We have men and, and, and men and women having children. And then later on, the same man and the same woman where they sitting there with a dude to sit there and lie to her in all kinds of ways 
Oh, baby, we're going to be forgiven. We're going to be together forever. The biggest lie in the world. Same, I was talking to one person the other day. Tell them, same thing, these little hard-head boys, little knuckleheads. And they said, well, what about you? Little knucklehead. I, I don't exclude myself when I call boys or men and, 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 and we were saying we ain't the brightest thing in the, in, in the crayon box. Don't think I, I take myself out of the box. I'm a man. So we all in the same box. And we love to sit there, especially when we're young. We like to take them younger girl, you know, we're going to get married. Come on, let's do it. That's, that's common. Common. And what's so crazy about it, we have taken some of these same identical things and we let people talk us out of this silliness. And, and the same thing with these women, they talk them out of, out of their virginity. And, and what that does, that allows you, that allows you to become dogs, whores. We don't bite our tongue over here. So, so if you knew over here, we, we're not going to bite our tongue because that's what you're doing. If you out there just out there, just I'm just out there freestyling. You're out there being a whore. Same with a man. It don't change for you either. You ain't nothing but a dog. You're out there playing something that you shouldn't be doing. In fact, um, I want to make sure because the body wasn't made for that. The body was not made. You see, he's telling you all day. It says now the body is, is not for fornication. It's not for fornication. So if you out there and you horn around, how in the world you think he going to use your body? This is man or woman. Get ready to get married and they, well, how many, how many partners you had? Well, I only had about 15. I only had about 15 in my life. Really? That's interesting. You had 14 too many. This is what we go through. This is what we have. And this is what we got to watch for. And then when you get something, then you also, then you want to wonder what you got. The body wasn't made for that. The body wasn't even made for that. And well, we're going to deal with some of that, but listen, I want to show you something and it's tucked away in the last book of the Bible. And you see, yeah, how was I going to say something? He going to say something. And I want you to see this. I'm going to highlight this one. Now, why it's not. Yeah, I guess it don't even like that. There we go. But I want you to see verse four first. And then we're going to go to verse. I mean, verse 14 first. Then I'm going to go to verse 15. That's the one I want you to see. That's why I highlighted it. And I want you to see, it says, blessed are they that do his commandments that they might have the right to the tree. They might have right to the tree of life, including enter into the gates into the city. So you have to be obedient and the body is not made for fornication. It's not made for adultery. It's not made for these things. And it's telling you, and he's telling you, so if you're not doing those things for without are dogs. You know, I'm not no dog. Yeah, you are. You are a dog. And the reason he even used the, 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 the parable of a dog, because a dog will sleep with anything. That's why you got so many people, they call them mutts. The dog mixed with this and the dog mixed with that. The same thing you see in the human world today. You got people mixed with it. Well, I got, I got, I got some Indian. I got some white and I got some, I got some European in me. Yeah, really? You're a dog. You came from a dog. <laughs> I'm telling you, we, we can't get out of, we, we hate to see the parable. We hate to see the truth. And the first thing we want to do is get upset. I'm part Indian. I got, you know, I got some Cherokee in me and I got some, I got some, I got some, some other stuff in me. I got some of that in me. Really? That's interesting. That's highly interesting. Bro, I'll tell you what, I got a dog who, who's a Labrador. He got some Doberman Pinscher. He got a pet bull in him. I got a dog like that. Oh, 
Really? That ain't a pure breed. Interesting. That's interesting. You talk about my dog is not pure breed. What about you? Oh. Oh. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. I, I thought so. Is it sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever love it, make it a lie? Because you ain't going to put yourself, you ain't going to compare yourself to a dog. And in fact, on top of that, he tells you this. He tells you this. He says, I, Yahawashai, so this is where it's coming from. I, Yahawashai, sent my angels to testify these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. But guess what? I get people using this verse. I get it. But I'm going to tell you something about this verse. Actually, I'm going to tell you what. Actually, I am going to do it. I'm going to show you something about this verse. I want to show you something about this verse. This verse right here. I want to show you something about I, Yahweh, I sent my angels to testify these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. I want to show you something. And I want to show you just how much the difference is on how much when you sit there and people talk about what they say they know and what they don't know. I'm going to show you what they don't know. Because it's not saying what you see there. Because the first thing we say is, I am the root. And you're sitting there thinking, he came, he came, he came from David. That ain't what that's saying. And then he's saying the offspring, he's telling you he's the son of David. Hell no, they ain't saying that. Not saying it nowhere. He's saying he's the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And everybody sit there and talk about everything else and talk, I know Greek, I know he Don't know none of it. Actually, I'm going to tell you what. Let me show you something. We're going to go into this. I want to show you something. Let's look at this. One second. I'm going to put this up there. I'm going to put this up there. One second. You know, just give me one hot second. I'm, I'm going to show you something. I'm just adding the stuff I need to add in. And I'm going to show you what this actually means. Because when you look at this, I'm going to show you what it means and how it actually works. And here we go. Okay. Now, I want you to see this. I want you to see that. If I need to blow it up, let me blow it up a little bit. I'm going to make sure you can see this. Now, this is what it actually says. This is what it's talking about. And he's telling you, I, Jesus, so he said, I am salvation, have sent my angels, sent my messengers to testify these things in the churches, in these gatherings. He said, I am the root. He's the counsel. And he said, the offspring, the prosperity of David, the bright morning star. And oh, don't worry, I'm going to tear this down for you. I'm going to tear this down for you. This is going to get torn down for you. I'm going to make sure that this is clearly torn down for you because I want you to understand everybody sit there and they talk about offspring is talking about that offspring ain't never, ever, 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 ever talking in the Bible, talking about talking about a child ever. But I get it. Oh, I get it. But that ain't what it's saying in, in, in the root. I get it. Carnally, what they saying. But guess what? That ain't what it's saying. That ain't what it's talking about. Actually, I'm going to tell you what. We're going we, we to walk through something. I'm, I'm going to show you something. You, you make sure you, you, you have your pen and paper on this one. And you go back and you check it. And I want to show you something. Let's, let, let, let's go over here. Um, we're going to go over here to um, Hebrews. We want Hebrews. We're going to Hebrews and we're going to find out what something actually mean. We're going to find out what some stuff mean, but I want to tear some stuff down because this, these are one of the ones why I like to catch people in person when people want to talk about what they know. This is, this is actually one of them. And you look at this in, in Hebrews chapter seven, picking up at verse 14. I want to show you something. I want to show you something to where you keep this in there and you write these precepts down. Make sure you have them. Make sure you keep them close to you each and every time. And I want to make sure that you don't get rid of it. It says, for it is evident that our creator spring, he spring, <laughs> he came forth. That's all it's saying. He arise. That's all it's saying. He ain't spring as a son. He's talking about he spring out of Judah. That's all it's saying. And it's telling you which 
the tribe of Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Now, Paul understood what he was saying. <laughs> Paul knew what he was talking about. We just didn't know what he was talking about. But we're going to find, we're going to walk through it. So I want to get to Paul. We're going to get to Paul. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna catch Paul up also. We're going to catch Paul up and make Paul tell you a bunch of information also. So we're going we're gonna to get on everybody, but because I'm going to make sure everybody know what everybody talking about. And we're going to see right here and we're going to pull all this together. So now we're going to catch Paul up because we're going to make Paul tell it. And Paul tell you, he says, Paul, an apostle, he's a messenger. Paul, an apostle, not a man. He ain't no apostle of man, neither by man. Ain't no man appointed him. And he said, but by salvation of the anointed one. Did you catch him? Paul telling on himself. I'm, I'm by that. He said, including God the Father. Y'all ain't hear me. <laughs> Y'all ain't hear me. We getting ready to catch Paul. Let, 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 let's catch Paul up. Let's catch Paul up and catch him why, why, why Paul did that. We want to see why Paul did that. We're going to go why he's using those two. Actually, it's already highlighted, so we're going to look at it all together. When you look at this in Isaiah chapter 12, verse, verse 2, it says, Remember, God is my salvation. So he just got this switched around because he called him, talking about including God the Father. That's the first one you see up here. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Spirit of God, Jehovah, is my strength and my song. He also become my salvation. That's the first one he's talking about. We caught Paul. Say, hey, Paul, I caught them dice. I caught them dice, Paul. And we see what's going on. And the reason he's even saying it in that way, because what we have to understand is how this all works out. Because Paul was a messenger, not a man, neither by man, but he was a messenger unto salvation, Jehovah. And he was anointed one, including God the Father, who raised him from the dead. And that's what happened here. He was raised from the dead. Actually, we won't tell you what. Let's, 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 let's. Just running this because as it run into me, I'm going to run into you. And we're going to look at this all together. Same thing is in Romans chapter six. We're going to look at verse one. Same thing he said. He says, what shall we say then? Shall we continually sin in that grace may abound? No. God forbid. No. How shall we that are dead in sin, which he is sprained out of Judah, live any longer therein we can't continually live in sin we can't live continually in sin he's telling us this but we got some more in here we got some we got some work to do we got some work to do to work it all out we're going to look at another piece and just get it all worked out here and and if i'm going too fast some people let me know because as it comes to me i run it that's kind of how i work and that's kind of how i do it but we're going to look at Romans, I mean, Isaiah chapter 11, verse one. I want to show you something. See, this is the catch. See, this is the catch right here. This is the catch. This is where we caught it here. It says in, in Isaiah chapter 11, verse one, it says, including there shall come forth out a rod out of the stem of Jesse, including a branch shall arrow shall, shall grow out of his roots. So he's going to, so out of his roots, out of his counsel, we're going to get something. He's telling us that right there. That's how we catching him. This is how you catch him up. But who we catching and who told on himself was Paul. He said, I speak to them who know the law. That's how we, that's how we, that's how we caught it. We caught it from Paul. Now we got to go a little bit more. Now we got to see how did this all work? How did it? Okay. So now we see it's talking about this root is counsel. We got to see what this man talking about. And this is why I sit there and say, we got to check this. Let's go over here a little bit more. Now let's go over here and pull up the lie that people like to use. I get it, but I get it what they saying carnally, but spiritually is not saying what they saying. So we're going to see there. We're going to see this here. So the same thing if we see here in, in Isaiah chapter nine, and we're going to pick it up at verse six, nine and verse six. And it tells us, it makes this perfectly clear for it. It says, for unto us a child is born. So unto us, we we can't fornicate and we can't be doing this crazy thing. So we're going to have a child. So with this child, a child is born to us. Another a baby, a child is born to us. It says 
unto us a servant is given. A servant is given, meaning that's the word of God. That seed, that seed is given to us. And with that seed, it's the word of God. And with that word of God, it has a government. And it tells you, and the government should be upon his shoulder. In his name, his way should be called wonderful. It's clear. It's clear crystal. Crystal clear. As, as, as Brother Daniel said it, 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 it's clear as a diamond in water. He, he, he sat there and said that. And that's telling you right there. Right there. It's, telling, it's His way going to be called wonderful. Counselor. Counselor. Because he's going to counsel you on what you need to do. The mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. Clear. Crystal. Crystal clear. So we now we know what's going on there, but it gets better. It gets better because we're going to see through that counsel on how these things work. It says in the increase of his government, of his dominion in the peace shall be no end upon the throne of David. You see how you keep throwing out all these, the throne of David, the dominion of David. And upon his kingdom. Ain't that interesting? His providence. His providence. You, you see how he's, he's giving up all this information, all this information right here. And he said, and, the, and he said, upon his kingdom shall order, establish it. With how you gonna how you gonna establish it? You see, you see right here, see right here? This is what he's talking about. This is the part I want you to see right there. It says, including with including to establish it with. How are you gonna establish it? He going to establish with doctrines and teachings, including justice from henceforth, even forever. So with his doctrines and teaching, that's how he's going to continually roll through. He's telling you right up front there, right up front. It says the zeal of the spirit of God, of host shall perform this. He's going to put that word in the, in your body. And that word going to sit there. Don't do no fornication because he's sitting there saying, I need that seed to grow a certain way inside this. And I need it to grow this right fruit. He's telling you right up front here and watch what happens here. <clears throat> He tells now he tells on himself right here. <clears throat> it says, in the creator sent word. Shut the front door. Somebody shut the door. In, in the in the creator sent word unto Jacob. Somebody shut the door. <laughs> Somebody shut the door. He, he sent word unto Jacob and have lightened it upon Israel. I'm only pausing because I want that to sink in. <clears throat> I want that to sink in. He sent word. I don't know what, I don't know what part we, I don't know what part we don't understand here. I don't know what part we don't understand here. And we get more of it when you look at this and when you look at Matthew. Matthew chapter one and verse one. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as it says here, it makes this clear. It says the book of the generations of salvation, the anointed one, the servant of David, the servant of Abraham. That's what it actually says. That's what it actually says. The book of salvation. Anointed one. It was the servant of David. It was the servant of Abraham. It was the servant of both of them. That's interesting, isn't it? Highly, highly interesting. And when you see how interesting that gets, you see when you get over here to verse six, for unto us, a child is born. For unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a servant is given. That's the word, including the government shall be upon his shoulder and his way shall be called wonderful. Counselor, because he's going to counsel you. Now we get it. This is why he tells you over here when we look at um, Revelations chapter 22 and we get to Revelations chapter 22 and we look at verse 16. It makes it clear for us. And he's telling you right here. Verse 
And I want to make sure they can see that. It says, I, Yahweh, I am salvation. So that's all he's saying. I am salvation. Sent my messengers to testify to you the things in the gatherings. I am the counsel, the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. This is all he's been saying the entire time. But just like I said, I get when people say it the other way. I get it. But this is what it actually says. This is what he's actually saying. In fact, just going a little bit off the, off the thing, I'm going to show you something. I want to show you something. And, and I want you to see this. Let me, let me show you something. Just to show you this. So as he says this, I want to show you this. We're going to look at um, Exodus chapter 3. <clears throat> the reason I want you to see chapter 3, I'm going to take you down to verse 13. And this is, again, where people screw up. But this shows, again, how much people don't know, how much they don't know and actually understand what's going on. And you see this here. We're going to start at Exodus chapter 3, verse 13. We'll see something what Moses did. We're going to see what Moses did. It says, And Moses said un, unto the guide, he said, Remember, when I come unto the children of Israel, including shall say unto them, Including, I'm going to tell them some stuff. The God of your fathers has sent me. So you said, and, and then I'm going to tell them the God of your father sent me. He said, and they should say to me, what is his way? How do you know? What shall I say unto them? <laughs> Moses a crack up, but that's okay. That's okay. We'll watch this. this. And this is, people didn't use this I am for every, all kinds of craziness. But this is what it's actually telling you. And the guy said unto Moses, I am that I am. I am salvation that I am. Takes you right back here. Takes you right back here. And Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. Takes you right back there. In fact, not only there, takes you to Exodus chapter 6 in verse 7. It says, I am take you to me for a people and I will be to you a God. I am salvation. You trust in God and God sent word. He sent me to you. I am that I am. And he said, thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, I am salvation has sent me unto you. So you go tell them, I sent you. I sent you to them. This is all he's been saying the entire time. The entire time is what he said. And what goes on here, but we're still going to take care of it. I ain't forgot about the other part. I ain't forgot about that. Because we need to understand what offspring is. See, I ain't forgot about that. I ain't forgot about none of that. So we're going to look at some of this, and we're going to, we're going to make sure that we clear on this all together. In First Chronicles, I want to show you something to where we won't go far off, but I want to make sure that you understand this before we move further. In First Chronicles chapter 22, we're going to look at verse 9. And just to make sure we can remember what's going on. <clears throat> it says, remember, a son shall be born to thee who shall be a man of rest. So he's going to be a man of rest. That's Solomon. And I will give him rest from all his enemies round and about for his way shall be Solomon. I will give peace and quietness unto Israel for his days. Why? Because David killed everybody. He shall build a house for my way, including he shall be my servant. I will be his creator. I will be his father. I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Meaning you're going to have rest forever. That's literally what he was showing. 
It says, now, my son, the spirit of God be with you, including prosper. Thou shalt build the house of the spirit of God. He have said, 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 uh, said of thee. Why are we here? Because he's giving him peace. And this is all counsel what he's getting. But let's get better. Let's get a little bit better here. Let's go to a um, Sirach. Sirach 47, 13. And understand what's going on here. It says, And Solomon reigned peaceably time in honor, for God made his choir round about him, and he might build a house in his name and prepare the sanctuary forever. How was that? <clears throat> Was that youth as, as a flood filled with understanding? Now, as we understand in all this, and what's going on here, what we want to do is understand now clearly what is a what is an offspring. Because he already given him knowledge of this. He's given him what's going on, and the reason David couldn't do it, but David killed all the adversaries. I want to actually let me show you that, and then we're gonna see this offspring. But I want to show you something here in First Kings. I want to make sure you get this here. <clears throat> First Kings chapter five, verse three. So we know what goes on here. It says, "Thou knowest how David, my father, could not build the house until the way of the spirit of his God for the war for the war, which were about him every side until the spirit of God put them under his soul of his of his desires. He took out everybody." But now the spirit of God, of my God, has given me rest on every side that I, that that there is neither an adversary nor evil occurrence. Yeah, there ain't nobody there. So, and this is all based on he prospered because David was obedient as far as him listening. We're going to see this now. Now we're going to see what this offspring is. And we look at Job chapter uh, 5. I want you to get this one five and we're going to look at verse 25 and you're going to see how crazy this, this looks once you really start seeing it. Actually, that's, that's 26. One twenty-five. It says, thou shall know also that thy seed, you see how he's saying thy seed. So this is your seed. This is talking about something that's coming from you shall be great, including. So your seed, including thy offspring, your prosperity, as the grass of the earth. So your prosperity is going to be like the grass of the earth. That's what he's telling you. Just right up front here. We'll look at another one in, um, in uh, Job 27. You see it's talking about kids, but you see when he got the offspring, it ain't saying your offspring, now saying kids again. I'm telling you your prosperity. In, in Job 27, and we'll pick it up at verse 14. And you see right here, providing his child be multiplied, it is for the sword. It says, including. You see right there, including. Is adding something, including his offspring, his prosperity. Because if he's sitting there, if if his children be multiplied and it's for war, it's, it's being used as a weapon of war. His offspring, his prosperity should not be satisfied with bread. It's not saying his children should not be, be satisfied. No, it's telling you his prosperity is not going to be satisfied. That's why you see even guys today. They you see guys today worth hundreds of billions and they're not being satisfied even with that. They're not even satisfied with that. They then they want more. They want more. And you'll see this also in Isaiah chapter 65. 65 and verse 23. You see this here. We're going to beat the horse for a while just to make sure we clearly get it. It says, they shall not labor in vain. 
So he don't want you to labor in vain nor bring forth for trouble. So he don't want you to do these things. He says, for they, for, for, for they are the seed of the blessed. This is the seed of the ones that the wisdom is given to of the spirit of God. It says, including their prosperity is with them, including your prosperity is with you. Why is it saying that? I'm going to show you why, why it's run, running there. Because your prosperity is with you. Because when you look at Revelation chapter 2, and I want to show you right here in verse 9. Because it's with you. That word is planted in you when you see even in Jeremiah. It says, I know thy works. What he's talking about. He don't want you to labor in vain, including tribulation and poverty. This is things according to the flesh. But he's telling you something that, that you still need to understand. But thou art rich. You have the knowledge and understanding of what is salvation and what it's about. We have to endure to the end. But he says more. He says, including, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are followers of Christ, including they are not. But are the gatherings of Satan. This is what they do. So we know that there. And that's why you sit there. You see people where they do all these things and they get all that and they looking for the peace and sincerity of what's going on in this world. The same thing I was just talking to another person. They're talking about Roe versus Wade because they want to have the freedom to where, you know, the Roe versus Wade thing is talking about this one court ruling about abortion. And they sitting there saying that a mother should be able to have, for a health reason or risk of a case of rape or incest to where she should have right to have abortion. But they don't even do it for that right now. They doing it for any, they just, girls just sitting there just having sex, having sex, having sex, having sex. And then the guy don't want, you know, he don't want the baby, they abort the baby. But if that guy is a wealthy guy or he, or this guy getting ready to go to the NBA or the NFL or anything else, get ready to make money, I don't care who that guy is. They're going to sit there. They're going to make sure they try to have that child. They're not going to abort the child because they see the child as a meal ticket. So you got to, you got to keep these things in mind on how this things work. But he's telling you, but people want to play God. People love to play God. So what we do, we sit here today. We look at people and we look at things today as meal tickets. And we seek their prosperity and their wealth. We seek their, their prosperity. We seek their wealth. We seek their securities. And the Bible made this clear to us. I'm talking about these things is made clear to us, but people look for that. This is one of the biggest things which people, and they get on both sides and they talk about divesting. This is where that comes from. That same ideology comes from that. In Deuteronomy chapter 23, and we're going to look at verse 6. It's recorded right here and it tells us, it says, Thou shalt not seek their peace nor prosperity all thy days forever. Don't ever do that. But is that true that we do? Yeah, we continue to do it. We continually do it. We're going to continually always seek their, their prosperity. We're seeking their wealth. We're seeking everything that we can do over on that side. And you'll see this actually even said again, even by Uncle Idris, and you'll see this over here tucked away in, in Ezra. Because in Ezra, he spoke, about, he spoke again of this same identical thing. And he made this clear to us that what we should be doing, but we don't do. Watch, watch what he says here. We're going to go down here to verse 12. And we'll see it. It says, now for that reason, give not. Now for that reason, give not your daughters unto their sons. You look at verse 11, he's kind of telling you what's going on. In verse 11, it says this, it says, um, uh, that which I commanded by the servants, the prophets saying the land unto which ye go to possess it and right where we're here right now today in, in, uh, is an unclean land with filthiness and of the people of the, of the land with their abominations, which have filled it from one end to another with their uncleanness. But it don't matter. We done made clean, we done made clean, unclean, and unclean, clean. We do that today. But he's telling you right up front, for that reason, where you are right now, you here right now, do not, 
give your daughters unto their sons, neither take their daughters unto your sons, nor seek their peace or their wealth forever. But that's what we do. That's what we do. We seek in their peace. We seek in their prosperity. And he said that you may be strong and, and learn good of the land and leave it for an inheritance unto your children. And that's what we're supposed to be able to do. Leave this information, this knowledge to our children. But the problem we have is so much that we like to play these little dumb games in the same. And I'm going to tell you one of the reasons why and, and I, got a, I got a chip on my shoulder behind that, because you have some of us and I guarantee you, you have a lot of people even here, you have a lot of people even here. And what we'll do, we'll sit there and we'll take the reasoning in, in the in the thoughts of somebody who think everything contrary to God. And people sit there. No, I don't. Yes, you do. A lot of us do. And what I want to bring up is one of the persons is like this guy, uh, Steve Harvey. Met him. But the same thing, his thought patterns, the way that he is, is, is everything that he'll tell you he's a Christian, which is a whole nother game within itself. But he's not a follower of Christ because everything that he do is contrary to God. He'll sit there and he wrote a book and was a bestseller, which was crazy. The bestseller, he talking about how women need to wait for 90 days before having sex with a man. That's craziness. Didn't he say you, he said you're rich. And he know the blasphemy of them would say they are followers of Christ. He know the blasphemy of them and this guy telling you this. But he's saying, but he said, I know thy works in the tribulation and poverty. This man sitting there telling you things that is contrary to God. And we'll sit there and be all day with it. All day with it. We will sit there and play with these abortions. We'll play with the fornication. We'll play horse. We'll do all these things with him. Actually, I want to show you something. I got I got it. Let me, let me blend this up real quick. I want to show you something. I'm going to show you this. In case you don't know, Moto, Tyler Perry, uh-huh, Oprah Winfrey Tell him. and Lee Daniel mm. to suck her private parts. Not my private parts. Well, you said if I had one, yeah. I want them three to suck my private parts. Yeah. It wasn't private parts on stage. So now, then I went, <gasps> I quit breathing. I quit breathing for you. I didn't. What happened to you, Mo, yes. was when you made that statement, the narrative got flipped. It wasn't about Netflix no more. It, was, it wasn't about Netflix no more. The attention was all off of that where we needed Netflix. to go. Huh? That was before Netflix. So good. So now when you bring up Netflix, it don't get no win, but you didn't just say this to these three people. And these three people, yes. not because they're powerful, mm -hmm. but because of who they've come. And what happens is, I told you, we can't cure darkness with more darkness. I got what we you. can do is cure it with comedy. And what I'm not going to do, Steve, I'm never, ever going to waver from my comedy show on that stage. That's my gift, and right. that's my freedom. And what happens is, when you allow people to start taking your freedom and your gift and making it become what makes them comfortable, we then lose. When you called me with the morning show on the phone, I said to you, Steve, my family is suffering behind this. And y'all know I did nothing wrong. Y'all know my husband did nothing wrong. But none of y'all in real time, in real time, was strong enough to go publicly and say, we can't throw our sister under the bus. Because, Mo, listen to me. We fighting two wars here. What war? We, there's two wars. It's what your issue is, and it's what the perception of the issue is, and the narrative has changed. See, I'm hearing what you're no, saying, no. baby, and I agree with it when the narrative changes. But if all of y'all said, this is the only issue I have with it, baby, when all of y'all said privately, to include Oprah, all of y'all said privately, we, I've done nothing wrong. When you tell the truth, you have to deal with the repercussions of the truth. We black out here. We can't come out here and do it any kind of way we want to. Let me, Listen oh, to me. Your husband yes. can't be the Sydney that he really is out here. Let me tell you They're something. Not, that flexing, Let me we got to flex a different way. We Let out me. here in a game. This is the money game. 
This ain't the black man's game. This ain't the white man's game. It's this is the money, the money game. game. But I, I'm we in the money something. game. And We're you cannot sacrifice game. yourself. The we best are. thing you can do for this poor is people is not be brother. one of them. You cannot We're help them. Money them. Game. I'm a college dropout. I was homeless, lived in a car for three years. I've lost every single thing I had, family included. I've been written off so many times. But today, the person that you sitting in front of you is a process. I want to talk to you for a moment about the process. Because see, one way to get a person to really follow you is to be the example of what you get, of what you're trying to get them to follow. I see some head nodding, you understand me. See, you can't tell these young dudes in the back to be righteous and you ain't, because they ain't stupid. They got them jackets on, but they smart cats now. They looking. See, skip what you say, they watching what you do. What I want to tell you now is what turned it around for me. And if you out here, one of the best things that you could do for yourself, you know my daddy used to tell me all the time, he said, son, best thing you can do for poor people is not be one of them. You see how he uh, takes that? He, he's telling you right up front, the best thing you can do for pro people is not be one of them. But he, as he told you, he said it's a process. It's a process on what he did. And with that process on what he did is he's telling you how he has molded himself to the world. He has molded himself to the world. And we're looking at the process. This is what we got to really get and really understand what's going on. And I want to show you a little bit more here. And, and um, let me go over here and uh, show you something. And we want to really get what, what, what we really need to see and how the thing is what went on. But let's go over here to um, 20... We got 23. We're going to get 24 in one second. But it says, They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth trouble. The seed shall be blessed in the Spirit of God and, and of their offspring, their, their prosperity with them, including it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer it while you are yet speaking, I will hear. He's, before they speak it, he's going to hear. And we want to make sure we understand what, what was being said. What was being said here? And why it was being said. So I want to show you something. I want to look at this. I want to take you to Sirach. We're going to pick it up at 23 and we're going to pick it up at 23 also. For first, she, she have disobeyed the law of the most high. So first, our, our spirits, um, we, we, we disobeyed. The, the covenant that we have made with, with God. Obey my voice, keep my covenant. We disobeyed that. Secondly, secondly, she trans trespassed against her. So she made an offense. She committed an offense against her own husband. This is something we did. In in fact, make sure we can't get out of it. I just want to make sure, because I don't like us to get out of stuff. Because we have people who sit there; they always find, oh no, I'm not doing, it. Okay, I'm not married again. I'm not okay. Let's let's look at everything as a whole. We look, we let the scriptures be true, and every man's a liar. And we're gonna see this in Jeremiah chapter three, picking it up in verse fourteen. It says this, and it says, it says turn. O backsliding children, said the Spirit of God, for I am married unto you. So if you're not married to Christ, then there's no reason for you to even be here. 
So if you're not married to Christ, there's no reason for you to be here then. Because this is who he's talking to. This is who he's talking to. And the main thing is, we are married to Jehovah. We're married to his word. And we are children. We are the followers. We are the works. Many times, and we produce works from another man. It, it's, it's telling us this right here. It's, it said we... It says, is it uh, you, your own husband? Thirdly, she played the whore in adultery and brought children by another man. This is interesting. This is what we done. And most people are going to sit there and say no. Actually, I'm going to tell you what. I want to do something. I want to do something. I'm going I'm to put a poll up. I want to put a poll up. I want to see where your mind at because... People, y'all don't know. A lot of you guys shocked me with your polls. <laughs> a lot of you guys shocked me with your polls. Let me put this in there. Let me put this up there. I want to put this in there. I want to sit there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask, this is going to be a two-part question. And and I want to see, because I'm going to tell you, I already know it's going to trip me out. So this poll is up, is, is the God of Israel your God salvation? And I mean, I mean, he's your God salvation. I need to, just need to know. Is this God your God <clears throat> salvation? <clears throat> I just want to know what, what, what we got there. I just want to know what we're going to have there. <clears throat> So, so far, we got four people, and everybody think it's a trick question. So, they scared to vote, technically, how this works. People, they sit there, I don't know where he's coming from, so I don't know. <coughs> Excuse me. But, so far, we got some people, they saying, we got three people saying no. Got a couple saying yes. Four percent saying no. <clears throat> Some saying yes. We got the one saying no. A few saying yes. And you need to put that in the in the thing. We got six percent. I'm gonna get ready to close it in about in about fifteen seconds. So we got seven percent saying no. 93% saying yes. So we're getting ready to end it. And we're going to see what it's saying. So we're going to end that poll. This one is ended. Now I told you this is a two part poll, what I'm going to do. This is a two part poll, which I'm going to do. And what we came up with, we came up with 8% of the people said no. And 8% 8 said no and 91% said yes. So I want to ask another one. I might ask another one. One second now. And one second, uh, one second. Let me just get this one. Give me one hot second. And we'll get this in there. I'm going to get the second part in there. And this is the second part. So we had the first one. And we're going to put in that second one. And we're going to see what it says there. So is Yahweh Shah the Messiah of Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Yes or no? And put it in the voting box. And the one, um, this cruise person, put it in the box and, 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 um, and stop putting your own little sayings in there. Either you're going to vote or just don't say anything. 
but but that's why Dick and Q keep deleting your stuff. Because you sitting there, you sitting there trying to make it, because you're coming off more like a Christian doing that. When people do stuff like that, they don't, they don't vote and they want to sit there and just say stuff. So we got 22% saying no, 77% saying yes. We want to let this go for about another 15 seconds before we shut that down. We're going to let this know a little bit more before we shut this down. Then we can look at both polls. So we have some people saying no. We have another percentage saying yes. We're going to end it in about uh, 10 seconds. And then we're going to look at the results. As we go in, so here's Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And we end in the poll right now. So this is what we came up with. We have, is God of Israel your salvation? We have 8% said no. And we ask, is, is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? And we had 22% said no. So this is why I say it takes time to where, and, and I'm going to be kind of harsh here because as I said, when people float around and I'm, I don't know how many times I got to say this, when people float around, they thinking they're going to get some doctrine over here. They're going to get some doctrine over there. They're going to get some doctrine over here. They're going to get some doctrine over there. This is what comes up. This is what you get. This is this tells on you, and we don't know who, which, which, what people voted what, but this is for yourself. And I'm gonna show you why this is such a problem. I'm gonna show you why this is such a problem. Let me um, let me go back in here, and I'm gonna show you. Same thing. Now I showed you this earlier. I showed this earlier, and for some reason, we're gonna look back at it. We're going to go right back here to Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. It says, remember, God is. So some people are saying God isn't. He said, is my salvation, I will trust and not be afraid. So we got right here where 8% of the people said God isn't. God is. Secondly, to show you even more so, let me let me let me go more so because this is this is the issue. This is why I say it's really important who you learn from. One, and and make sure when people float around, this is what you're gonna come up with. This is why he says only so many gonna make it. This is this is literally why he says this in Wisdom of Solomon chapter eighteen verse fifteen. So we know God is my salvation, and we know He sent the word, the Almighty Word, leap down out of heaven, out of our royal throne, as a fierce man of war into the land. A destruction. He sent this word to us. He sent this to us. We clearly know this. So that's why I say people think these are trick questions, but these are straightforward questions. But everybody think it's a test and it's not. It's just saying, what do you believe and what do you hold on to? And we have a lot of people believe we got 8% of the people believe God is not their salvation. Now, the crazy part is this. It says, is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? He sent this word for the Lord, the Spirit of God, Jehovah, who is the anointed one, is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. To save each and every one of us from our sins. So I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what's going on here. One second, I can. I want to make sure I got this one piece here. 
And this is this is why this is why it gets something. And I'm gonna tell you what this this cruise guy stop just stop posting in here. That's that's yeah. Don't don't post no more in here. Just stop posting. And and the main thing is what we want to understand is that. So if we don't know that he is our our salvation, we this is this is the confusion part. Because most of us don't know who God is, and we don't know that God sent word. God can't look upon; He can't look upon iniquity. It tells you that in the Becca. I mean, in Haggai. Actually, yeah. Let me go. Let me go there. It's Haggai. I believe it's Haggai. Let me um. Where's Habakkuk one thirteen? In yeah, Habakkuk had it right. So it tells you right here, he can't look upon us. It says, Thou eyes are thou art pure eyes to behold evil. Thou canst look upon iniquity. Wherefore lookest upon thou them deal treacherously. So he sends word. Sends word. He sent word. But many people still believe that. God isn't. Eight percent of the people don't, don't believe God is, and then we have a lot of people who don't believe that the Word can save you. You need to have the knowledge to get in there. That's why He says a lot of people is not going to make it. And the reason why I, I I really wanted to see right right where you are. See, many people, no matter what we do, besides you take out take the information here and then do your study. Make sure you can study to show yourself approved on what you learn. What most people are going to do, they're going to float to other places that's completely contrary. They're going to run the camps. 